<laughs> so we got a bit of a pointless video today um that thing has hurt your ears loud when you punch it and i was dumpster diving last night in one of the auto parts place still looking for rims to do that uh, 14 inch rims to do the dollies with uh, and I found uh, found uh, some stock car exhaust parts that look like they're for a truck or something big so I want to uh, I, I don't have the cat so we'll call this uh, a stock exhaust system with a punched cat on the Ford wheeler we're gonna make this happen uh, also, I grabbed a hub because something Ripka did at his place to make a mobile vise was he actually just bolted his vise down on the hub and then he just has the hub where he can clamp it down the tables and stuff. And I really like that idea, so I'm going to steal it. This ain't easy to cold start. I'm putting an electric starter on it. You know, if you ever wanted to be a dick to the consumer uh, with making a product and without them even realizing it, all you gotta do is just make all kinds of anti features in the products, then call it luxury and they'll go all over it. Well, enough ranting. Let's see if I can battery pack start this thing. I guess I'm going to try pushing it over here, which won't be very fun. And when I get it over here, when I go to do a test fire, I can start it with this and some vice grips. I think this wire might be thick enough to carry the good enough current from uh, Dinky's 300 CCA battery. If you're ever in this odd situation where you're using vice grips and zero gauge uh, amplifier wire for a jumper cable, always make sure to put the longer pair of vice grips on the ground so if it hits the hood, it doesn't arc out. Expected result. It's got really hot. I must have a poor connection. Hey, I figured out why Dinky's electric start system ain't working. The fuse blew. The charging circuit is fried on that, and my float charger won't turn on, so I guess I gotta get this guy off the amplifier setup. Well, I was trying to get y'all a little refresher of what this guy is supposed to sound like. Uh, that'll come later, I guess. Well, I can use clips uh, from the past. We'll go to the new exhaust. And I am charging two batteries at once now. And uh, when that battery pack is charged, I might be able to jump the cub with that. So yeah, what I'm going to do is see how the parts line up. And I want to make it so that pipe can go on here. And I'd like to keep it as full length as possible. And I'll weld up some type of ghetto support I could maybe bolt onto here to keep the muffler going. I'm okay with it going back a ways as long as it don't hit the tire and don't hit the gas tank. So if it sticks out to like here or something, I'm fine with that because I don't even pop wheelies on here. And I'm not going to be driving this thing too heavily until I just completely rebuild it anyways. And there's two reasons I'm not driving it. The clutch setup is a pain in the ass right now. And that's a big one. And the reason why I haven't taken it on a trail ride is because... The transaxle has a bad seal on its input pulley, and mud gets in it. And I don't want to kill my uh, I don't want to kill my transmission. It's been really good so far. I haven't broke it. That's why it's been really good. So I got this kind of laid out. That pipe's gonna go there, and it'll come down up like this. I'll cut these guys off right here, and. Uh, then this will come up uh, and I'll cut this off and this will actually go over that and uh, I'll weld her up and stuff her full of putty which I have laying around and before I even uh, weld up there I'm going to weld the muffler on back here figure out how I want to do it uh, there's two ways I can weld it on and uh, then we'll see about some 
scrap metal support. All right, that's how the thing's gonna sit. And for added strength, I'm actually gonna cut a piece of this conduit off uh, to use as a spacer between the two. Apparently it's just cold, this stuff gets hard. This ain't gonna smell too great on startup. I had issues with it sticking in my hands real bad. So I got it around as good as I could, but it was, and it was still fitting kind of loose. And then I just wrapped some duct tape around it, and then I could really smash it in there. And it's sticking to the duct tape ain't a problem because I don't have to pull the duct tape away. It'll smell awful, and who knows, it may even start a small fire, but I'm not afraid of a fire that small. So here's our little tour. That pipe is actually has a really good shape for this. Uh, I might have to actually save that when I do the motor swap on this thing again. Because this, this pipe has a great shape for this. Uh, yeah, I decided to go against welding on this because, I mean, this isn't permanent. I just need it to work, and I think this will work. Uh, and uh, I guess if it sounds real bad or real leaky, I could always uh, put more of that putty in this stuff. Yeah, I might even just... <laughs> Or I could even just get those uh, metal uh, screwy on -y things. I can't remember what they're called. They're like zip ties, but you use a screw. I could just wrap aluminum foil around this a couple times and use that stuff to seal it in. Let me see if we can get some battery started. Good start. I just figured out why the Ford won't start. I forgot it even had a kill switch and it was in the off position. So we're ready to start, but I have to do a little more welding. So we're not ready to start. There's massive leaking come out of this left cylinder over here. It's quiet over here. It's all out of this one. <laughs> 